Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Carly and this is my channel SoScape and today I'm going to be doing Bird of Free Beginners episode 2. So this is the top that we are going to be making here. Let me get it to focus. Here's the line drawing and here it is here. And so it's the super easy model. It can be sewn from a woven fabric or a stretchy fabric. So today I'm going to be using some Ponte. I'll show you that right now. So we're going to be using this cream colored kind of off-white Ponte knit. So I'll show you how much stretch we have. So this way not very much. And then this way quite a bit. So it'll be stable enough to hold the shape of the top but still stretchy enough that I don't have to worry about cutting the neckband on the bias. So in the pattern here, if you're gonna be making it out of, this one is out of a satin, and then the other version in the magazine, which is here, is made out of a viscose. So you can totally make it out of a woven, you just wanna cut this on the bias so that the cowl kind of sits nicely and isn't too tight to put your head through. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start tracing out the pattern. All right, so it's this 106 top that we're gonna be making here. And so our instructions tell us to follow the green pattern line on sheet C, and we're gonna be tracing pattern pieces one, two, and three. And so there will also be a neckband piece that we will just kind of cut and measure as we go. So the measurements for that will be here. So I'm gonna be making a size 40, so we'll make sure that we have enough fabric to cut this out as well as we are planning it out. So I'm going to pull out the pattern sheets from here that are just nestled right in, and we will get started tracing. So when I'm tracing out a pattern, the things that I need to have with me before I get started are, or is some tracing paper. So I'm running dangerously low on tracing paper, so I hope I have enough to finish this. I have a couple more rolls stashed, but they're not, I'm very particular. So the paper that I like to use is esthetician's paper. So like say you're going in to get a wax, this is the paper that they put on the bed. I feel like doctor's office paper would be the same. I get mine at, my hair supply store. I'm a hairstylist when I am not sewing, so um, this is pretty easy for me to find. But I think if you go on Amazon and you search in like esthetician paper, waxing paper, maybe not wax paper, but uh, medical paper, it'll come up. So I find this paper is really nice and thin to see through. So when you're tracing the colored lines, it makes it super duper easy. The, I have some other tracing paper and it's thicker and it's really hard to see through the lines. So I find this is the best and it is kind of slippery so it traces really nicely. So paper is definitely needed. And then I just have a pencil, pencil sharpener so we get a super accurate marking accurate lines, because the more accurate you trace, the more accurate your pattern pieces will be. When I first started sewing, I did not understand seam allowances, so I would make like McCall's patterns, and they would always end up so big, and I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Why can't I figure this out? And then I realized it was because I was not being consistent with my seam allowances. So with Berta's style, it's amazing because we add in the seam allowances. So everywhere that I'm going, I'm like, ah, oh, yes, I have to make sure I sew this at five eighths of an inch or else it's not gonna work out, you know, and you're gonna end up with something that is too big or too small if you use too big of seam allowances. So a pen, pencil and pencil sharpener and then a ruler. So this one has the kind of French curve in here, but when I'm, sewing or when I'm tracing a pattern I almost always exclusively use this line so I'm gonna hold it up close so you can see here so this thick line there the thick line here is the 5 8 of an inch mark so I just kind of follow that all the way around and trace along this edge here 
and so as I go around corners I just move it that way and make tons of tiny little marks and then I'll use the curved edge just to connect them and this is my favorite ruler in the world I the only problem with it that I find is it's so clear which is amazing I always leave it on my seat on my chair here and then I sit on it and I, I've cracked a couple so this is my second one that I've bought and this one has no big cracks in it but the last one that I had was covered in tape because I just didn't want to let go of it so I bought this at my local fabric land I'm in Canada um, but I'm sure that you could find it probably at your local fabric store or craft center but yeah I feel like the curve here is great for connecting lines and then this is so clear for marking your your pattern pieces and then the last thing I like to keep while I'm tracing is this little mini rotary cutter so I cut everything with a rotary mat even my patterns but I like to make sure that when I'm cutting out patterns versus fabric I have two separate rotary blades so they still stay super sharp so this one is great for going around little edges and everything and it is so cute and I haven't had to replace the blade so far it's still super sharp cuts through the, through the paper like it's nothing the only problem with this one is it is you have to you know move this little thing to put it up and down whereas my one for fabric you just press it down and it has like a safety guard on it and I always forget to close this one so that can get a little dangerous but does the trick so let's get tracing so when you open up to the middle of your magazine the little pattern sheet is nestled in the middle just like this so what I like to do because I don't want to wreck my fingernails is I take a little pair of scissors and just pop up the staples here trying not to mess with the patterns because I want to keep these and use them for a long long time and then I just lift the sheet out here so your magazine is all intact here and then your pattern pieces just come out of the middle and then I use the little rubber ends of the scissors just to stick these back down there we go we'll move these out of the way here and then we unfold our great big sheet of pattern so here is the giant sheet all together here so there are there is C and D on this side and then you flip it over and there will be A and B. So there is a little cut mark here. This is where we separate the pieces to make them manageable so you don't look at this and get too worried. So I'm going to cut along that line now. All right, so now we have our pattern sheet C separated, and so we're going to be looking for numbers 1, 2, and 3 in the green lines. So if you look along the top edges of your Berta magazine, you'll see all these numbers here. So these aren't our green numbers, so these aren't important to us. So down on the bottom, we see our green numbers here. So there's 1, 3, and then 24, 21. We don't need those and then two is over here. So the easiest way to kind of find your pattern piece is so one is here. So we draw a line and we look, it's like, where's Waldo? Where's the number one? There it is. So if you look here, here's the curved hem of the top and here's the dart. This is where it comes in, the arm sleeve and the front area here so we will get tracing so I always like to start at the bottom just because you it's easy to follow the lines there and trace on up so I'm gonna be making a size 40 these days I kind of fit mostly into a 42 but because I'm making it in a stretchy fabric versus a woven fabric I think the 40 will work out better and so let's trace out this piece one
back from a quick break. My oldest forgot his backpack at home this morning, so I had to run back to the school and bring it to him. So, I just ran out of my favorite tracing paper. I thought I would have enough, but I didn't. So I'm gonna have to go into this tracing paper. So it's a little less see-through, and we are tracing the green lines, so they're the hardest lines to see, apart from the shaded and red lines. So I'm gonna turn on a few extra lights just to help me out and we will finish tracing pieces two and three. So now that we have that all traced, I'm gonna go around and add seam allowance to all of my seams. So normally if I'm sewing something mostly on my serger, I only add a quarter inch seam allowance so I'm not wasting the fabric and I'm able to squeeze out more pattern out of less fabric, right? But because this pattern can be made for woven as well as stretchy fabrics as well as jersey I am gonna add the full 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance because I can definitely see myself making this again in something that doesn't have stretch in it I'm curious to see what the fit difference would be hmm should I make a second version ah let's make the first one first and see how it goes so I'm gonna go around and add that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance to everywhere except for things that are cut on the fold so on the bodice front and the bodice back, they are cut on the fold, so there's no center seam. So we leave the seam allowance there. We don't add any there because that doesn't need to be a seam. And we just add it around all the other edges. Also on the um, neck collar piece, because they add the measurements in the book, like you trace it out, it's not an actual pattern piece. So you see here it was 24 and 3 eighths of an inch by 9 inches. I traced that out. The seam allowance are already included in that so you don't have to add any seam allowance to it but make a note on your pattern piece so that you don't add the seam allowance twice. I've definitely made that mistake before and you don't need to. I always trace mine out on paper instead of tracing it right onto the fabric because I feel like it's more accurate and that way if I'm making it again I don't necessarily have to take my magazine out I can just take the pattern pieces out and if it's an easy pattern like this it's very self-explanatory on how to put it together so I trace the pieces just so I have that pattern in my collection and I don't have to keep referring to the magazine because I want to keep this in pristine condition as I can because I'm sure I'm going to be sewing from it for years to come so let's add those seam allowances <laughs> Pristine condition. <laughs> So now that I have all those seam allowances added, I'm gonna go through with my little mini rotary cutter and we're gonna cut out all those pattern pieces. So now that we have all the pieces cut out, I'm gonna run you through all the markings that we should have on each of our pattern pieces. So this is the front piece here. So on the front piece, we should have our dart marked, and then we should have a one on the shoulder seam to indicate this is our first seam. We should have a two indicated on our side seam that this will be our second seam sewn. And then we should have a four indicated on our arm side, letting us know that will be the fourth seam sewn on this garment. There will be two notches on the side seams to match up with the other piece. 
I thought it might be easier to see on the little mini diagram here so I'm not holding up the giant pattern pieces. So then on the back piece here, we should have our piece, our two notches on the side to match up with the two notches on the front, and then a one on the shoulder seam to indicate that'll be the first seam we sew, a two on this edge to show that's the second seam we sew, and then on the sleeve piece, we'll have a grain line drawn in because this is not cut on the fold like these two are. So our grain line keeps everything sitting nicely and our clothes looking fantastic. There will be a three along this edge, letting us, oh, sorry, a three down this edge, letting us know that this will be the third seam we sew, our sides of our sleeves together. And then the four will be the fourth seam we sew, attaching our sleeve to our bodice pieces. So on this, there's a notch in the middle that will attach to the shoulder seam, and then there's a notch in the front side. So the notch is always on the front side of the pattern piece, so that goes with the front bodice, and that's how you know which side of the sleeve is the front and which side of the sleeve is the back. So now we're just gonna be cutting out these pattern pieces here. So I have each of the sides folded in, so there are two folds in the front of this fabric. And so I'm just going to use my rotary cutter and go around each piece. Now I'm taking my water soluble pen and I'm just marking in the darts and then using my scissors to cut in the notches on the pattern. So I just had a little lunch break, watched a little bit of TV and now I have one hour left before I have to pick up my kids from school. So now that everything's cut out, everything's marked, we'll see how far that we can get in an hour. I'm hoping to get everything done except maybe the hemming, but who knows, maybe we'll be able to get all of it done. So we're gonna start out with our bodice pieces here. And so we are going to pin our darts and I'm gonna sew them. So because I'm using a stretchy fabric, I'm gonna be using my little lightning bolt stitch. I find it sews darts really nicely. It's not a super pretty stitch to go on the outside of garments, but on the inside of garments, it's perfect. And yeah, I feel like some people might just use a straight stitch for this, but I never want my darts to pop, you know? Like stretch a certain way and like boom, boom. <laughs> no, not for me. All right, so I have my darts pinned there. So I just have one kind of along the dart line and then I have one that's the exit point. So you wanna make sure your last stitch is right there. And so I always mark right to like bloop off the end of the sewing machine. So here's my machine here. So I sew with the Singer Quantum Stylus. So I'm gonna sew those darts with the lightning bolt stitch. So that is right here on my machine but your machine might have something similar. You could always just do a zigzag and just set it to a very narrow zigzag. You don't need any fancy settings. And now that our darts are sewn, we're gonna take this over to the ironing board and we're gonna press those darts down. And while we're there, we'll kinda like kill two birds with one stone and we're going to press the curved hem up by our desired seam allowance. So I added 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. This is a ponte so it doesn't fray. So I'm not gonna overlock the edge, I'm just gonna fold that up by 5 eighths of an inch and then we'll hem it before we put the two sides together. So 
I've pressed that curved edge here and I'm just going to sew that down with a twin needle. So I have my twin needle loaded in here and there is a twin needle setting on my sewing machine right here but I tend to find that my sewing machine works better if I just leave it on its regular setting and then change my stitch length to three. But we will see. So I'm just going to top stitch this hem down with just a narrow stitch. So now we have those curved hems all sewn up. I'm just gonna give them a bit of a press. And then we are going to sew the shoulder seams together and the side seams together. So I have my shoulder seams pinned now. And so I'm gonna take them on over to my serger. I'm gonna skip sewing them and just serge everything together. And so I'm gonna serge this using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then instead of sewing up the side seams right away, I'm gonna um, insert the sleeve flat because I am using a stretchy fabric instead of kind of easing in once the sleeve is sewn as a tube, I find it easier just to attach it while it's flat. So if you're using a jersey or stretchy fabric, you can assemble yours flat with me. If you're using something woven, then you can sew up the tube and then just ease the sleeve in. just attach the sleeve with some pins so important places to make sure you have marked correctly are your notches are together the ends end and start at the same place and then that center notch matches with the seam the shoulder seam here so you just distribute the rest of that evenly so there will be more fabric on the sleeve than there is on the bodice piece, but as we serge this, we're just going to stretch and ease them together. Instead of using gathering stitches on stretchy fabrics, we just stretch and ease them together with our using the stretchiness of the fabric as our gathering stitches. So now we are going to set in those sleeves now that we have everything pinned into place. So when I'm serging, I have a little tip. Whenever I'm running things through the machine, I notice where I have pressed seams. So this seam gets pressed over this way. As I'm using my serger, I like to sew things in the direction that the press is going so that it stays going the right way. I feel like with my serger, a lot of times it'll like pop the press over to the other side and I'm not a fan. So now that we have that sleeve all sewn, I'm going to turn the whole bodice right sides together, matching up the underarm seam, and I'm going to pin all the way down the bottom curved edge to where the sides meet, the armpit seam, and then all the way to the end of the sleeve. And we'll get that sewn up. So now I have that whole edge pinned from the curve all the way to the end of the sleeve and we're just gonna sew this all up with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I run out of time so I have to go get my kids from school and when 
sometime later tonight, I'm gonna end up finishing the collar and then hemming the sleeves. I just did a really quick little try on. It's looking so cute, I'll show you when I'm back, but I think I'm gonna shorten the sleeves a little bit just so they look intentionally short and not like I made them too short. I don't know as a home sewist if you guys ever experience that where you're like hypercritical of like design features being like, will this come across as an intentional design figure or design decision or is it gonna look like I you know made homemade clothes which is still amazing but you know we always wonder if people are thinking that if they know that we sew. I'm back from the school run now so I have my neck piece my collar and I didn't have enough fabric to cut this on like the the way it should go the stretchy way but because the pattern also goes for woven fabrics I think it'll be fine I have put it over my head I can get it over my head no problem so I don't see anything wrong with that so I just surged the edge together so now we have that tube and I'm going to fold it in half so that seam is hidden and this is going to be our collar here just like that beautiful so I'm gonna quarter this marking all the quarter points so that we evenly distribute this into the sweater now I have the quarter points marked on the sweater so a pin in the middle of each and then the shoulder seams acting as the quarter point for those and then on the neck piece I have three pins plus the seam line in here so I'm gonna mark or I'm gonna attach this seam line to the center back and then just match up each pin with its matching quarter mark. I have put the neck band inside here, right sides facing, and I have all those quarter points marked up. So I'm just gonna sew along and I'm just gonna stretch slightly to kind of match all these edges together and ease that neck collar into the top of the sweater. There is my neckband all stitched on. It's hard to see because it's all white. It seems these days I've been sewing a lot of all white and all black. I should get something colored so I can show it a little bit better. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim off maybe 5 eighths of an inch off these sleeves so they look shorter. And then I'm gonna fold up an additional 5 eighths of an inch and just stitch that down with my twin needle. finishing my last sleeve I broke my needle I don't know if I caught it on film if I did I'm putting a slow-mo in so I had to finish it up with a smaller twin needle and it looks fine they won't match but that's okay so all that's left to do is try it on and see how it's looking Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!